Hi, welcome to Blaze Cooks. I'm Blaze, your host, and today we're going to make caramel. By the way, Happy New Year. It's 2008. I got my new haircut. Hope you like it. Today we're going to make caramel because I made it over the holidays, and I really like making it, eating it, and my girls, of course, loved it. And it's also a nice gift if you're willing to wrap up a bunch of little pieces of caramel. Now, caramel, there's a lot of science to making caramel and other candies, but I recommend you read this book for all the science because I really want to just show you how to make it and how easy it is, and I really don't want to focus on the science right now. It's called Cookwise by Shirley O'Corhar, and there's a lot of resources about the science of candy making. Now, you will learn a little bit about the science as I'm going through the process of making it, but I, I just don't want to talk about it too much. The first thing you need is a heavy bottom pot because you don't want the sugar burning on the bottom of your pot. You cook it over medium heat, but if you have one of those thin metal pots, forget it. You've got to get a heavy metal pot or just move on to making something else. I have some caramel being made back there right now, but I just want to show you how you get it started. You spray the inside of the pan first, which I did already. That keeps the sugar from bubbling up and then crystallizing on the side of the pan. Then you put in a, got to keep an eye on that caramel back there. Then you put in a half a cup of sugar, a half a cup of cream. Actually, this is half and half. You can use either. The more fat, the more soft and, and creamy the caramel is going to be. A, two tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to eye up a half a cup of corn syrup. It doesn't have to be exact. You just need some corn syrup in with the regular sugar because, again, scientifically, there's something about the, the sugar, the, uh, the, the sugars that make up granulated sugar, that's sucrose, and the sugar that makes up the corn syrup. It creates the corn syrup creates this interference that prevents the sugars from the table uh, sugar from recrystallizing. Again, it, it, it can get really detailed, but you'll see a lot of detail in the science of making caramel, but frankly, not much when it comes to just cooking it and, and enjoying it. So I'm going to put this over on, uh, I think I have everything right. Actually, you know, I'm, I'm going to leave the salt out. You can also add salt, but it's not necessary. I'm going to put this over on medium heat, and when the butter starts melting, I'm going to stir it, and I'm going to leave it be until it starts getting kind of molten looking, not color yet, but molten sugar, and that's when you start putting the thermometer in it and keeping an eye on it. Now, let's go over and see the one I've already started. Right now, you can see the, the sugar syrup solution, and it, it, like I said, it looks like molten sugar. Uh, there's no color yet, which is good, because once it starts getting a, a, a light brown or tan color, very close to being finished. Now over here I have a candy thermometer, it's a little dark, I apologize, and the temperature now is 210 degrees. Now it only has to go up to 248 to reach the soft ball phase, and I'll explain that to you in a bit. But believe it or not, it takes a while for this to go from 210 degrees to 248 degrees. But this gives you a good idea of what it's supposed to look like, and at this point I can't stir this or swirl it until it's finished. Soft ball simply means if you take a drop of that hot caramel and drop it into a glass of cool water, it turns into a soft ball of caramel. And that's of course just what we want. We want soft caramel once it hits that water, it cools down to basically room temperature. But we're not going to be dropping balls of caramel in the water. We're just going to be looking at a thermometer and we know uh, through other people's scientific efforts that the soft ball stage is when that sugar, uh, that caramel hits 200 and 48 degrees. But you can see the beautiful color it is and it actually gets even more beautiful as it cools in a greased uh, ceramic dish. At least that's what I'm going to use. You, you can use any greased pan or of course uh, greased uh, candy mold. And I'm just going to pour, hopefully you can see this, I'm going to pour this hot caramel right into my pan. In my ever so shameless way I put all my caramels from an earlier batch in a nice pretty good diver box. It's so convenient. And here they are. They're not perfectly square because as you can see this is rounded edges, but I don't care. Again, it's just for our own consumption. And you see you get your just a beautiful cube of delicious caramel. And the trouble with making caramel is that you're not going to be able to stop eating it. So make sure you have some friends or family that you can give some to. 